Eagle Community Television presents Community Connection with your host, Mike Cooper. Welcome to Community Connection from Eagle Community Television. And thanks for watching. Thanks to our producer, Jeff Durall, and welcome. We're in the Midwest Energy uh, Building, uh, headquarters on Canterbury and Hayes, talking with the energy consultant, Brian Dryling. And uh, we thank you for watching our Community Connection. Seems like, Brian, it was only yesterday when we were talking about summer energy savings, and here it is fall and winter, so we need to talk about how to save energy and money during the fall and winter season. So let's begin with what's the easiest fix for energy savings in the fall and winter, Brian? Well, the easiest fix for most of our customers to do are just kind of seal up around the house, you know, fix the air leaks that you've noticed all, all summer long and, and kind of get those things adjusted. And, and probably the thing that we like to talk about the most is the safety factor. Uh, we're sw switching from uh, air conditioning season to uh, heating season, and it typically means that we're, we're changing fuels also. We're going from electricity to, to gas or propane. And anytime you switch fuels, you have to make sure that your equipment is in good operating condition. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to see people get things checked and, and, and get them really checked. They need to be looking at things like changing the filters and cleaning the filters to cleaning out the the burners to uh, oiling the uh, the motors if they allow you to do that, uh, you know, uh, checking the pressure on the gas lines and, and, and things like that are on the furnaces. Make sure everything's burning, not only for the efficiency sake, but also for the safety side of things. And unless somebody is proficient in this, they really ought to have an expert do it. Right, Absolutely. Brian? I think that, especially when it comes to cleaning and tuning a furnace, an expert has to do that. They have to have the proper equipment. Uh, the proper knowledge, and, and also it takes some time. It's it's, it's fairly uh, extensive operation. All right, now about sealing up, there are some products available over the counter at uh, the hardware stores and such, uh, everything from the foams to the plastics and things like that. Are those appropriate? Can they be used for those type of things? You know, most of the products on the market today are, are relatively effective. Um, the foams are, are great products out there. There are many different types. There are types for big gaps and there are types for little gaps. There are types for windows and doors. Make sure you use the appropriate size. If, if you're filling in foam around a window, for instance, and you use the, the super expanding foam, as we like to call it, well, it, it could actually swell the window to where it can't operate anymore. So you want to use the product that's designed for the windows and doors and it will still be effective air sealing, but it won't break or, or damage the product. And a lot of times retailers can help the consumer with those type of products that would be appropriate. Absolutely, and, and look at the can. And here again, if you, if you want to mm. buy a product and you're not sure about it, uh, Midwest Energy is a great resource. We will answer the phone mm -hmm. and uh, we'll give them our opinion on that. So. And what about uh, Midwest Energy and uh, the discovery of some of those areas that need to be sealed. Uh, you've got uh, ways to do that. Brian. Absolutely. You know, one of the tests we offer is called a blower door test. And what we do is we go in and we, we pull a vacuum on the house and we, we find out the leakage rate of the house, which is a great number to know. But more importantly is we find the leak locations. Mm -hmm. And that allows the customers to, to seal up the real important leaks. The other side of the, the blower door test is it helps us determine the safety level of air tightening because at times you can get a house so tight that you create problems. So uh, just arbitrarily filling in leaks may not be the safest thing to do. So uh, the test is a great opportunity to know where your leaks are, but also to know if you need to fix them or not. Also, uh, talk about the easiest fix, uh, generally uh, sealing up those cracks in those areas that uh, uh, might be exposed to the cold of winter. What would be the quickest payout? That is the type of thing that would be done the quickest that would give us the best bang for the buck, basically. It, it seems like the best bang for the buck, if you will, seems to be the air sealing and also the insulation. Mm -hmm. um, the nice thing about the insulation though is once you've done it, it you, you're, you're done. It's, mm -hmm. it, it's completed, it's intact, it's gonna stay that way. Uh, so then you can move on to the more uh, uh, expensive things to do or, or less mm -hmm. less useful things to do but still energy savings. And that was my next point was about the best long-term investment. Uh, we'll go to that in a minute Brian but if you would talk about the attic insulation. So many different types. How do we know what's best? Well the, the attic insulation the, the, and you're right there are many different types out there but, but basically there are three three main styles. You have your fiberglass products you have your, your recycled cellulose products, and, and today you have some of the foam products that are out there. 
Um, all of those are, are, are insulations that seem to work okay. Some work better than others. Uh, the, um, it seems like the cellulose products, the, the recycled newspaper, which is a green product, uh, has a little bit better thermal resistance than some of the fiberglass products do for the same thickness. And by thermal resistance, you mean what? Well, typically in the industry, they call that the R value. It, it's the oh, ability yeah. to stop the heat from flowing through. Okay. And that's really what we're wanting to do is, is keep the heat inside. Mm -hmm. So the higher that, the higher the, the resistance is, the more heat we keep inside. And so if you're limited on space, for instance, say you could only blow in six, six inches, some products, for instance, like cellulose, has a, a higher per inch rating than fiberglass would. Some of the foams have a higher rating than even the cellulose. So you kind of have to see what you want and see how much you need and how much space you have to work with. Typically, we see that uh, the cellulose products seem to perform better for our customers mm -hmm. with, with all those things in mind. But the idea being you want the highest R value you can get you do. on whatever insulation you can afford and what you choose. You do, and, and, and along with some good basic air sealing, you'll, you'll achieve that, and, uh, and that's real important. And then on long-term investment, uh, Brian, what would you say? Uh, appliance change out, bulb change out? Uh, you know, the bulb change outs are relatively easy. That's not a real uh, big investment, mm -hmm. and, and it's uh, not always real long-term. You know, it's the life of the lamp. Uh, but those are always great things to do. But probably the best long-term thing is, is you have to look at the heating and cooling systems in your house. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, today you, you have many choices, obviously with different brands, but also the efficiencies. They run from anywhere on the furnace side from 80 to about 97%. Um, the higher the better. Mm -hmm. um, in Kansas, starting in January of this year, I believe the 80% will be uh, no longer available. So the government's kind of taken a little bit of that out of those choices away from us. And I, that's a good thing because we're going to force everybody to go to the higher efficiency. Mm -hmm. um, but along with it, you get also a little bit higher amount of safety to with the 90 percenters. So. And you also save money in the long run with the higher efficiency, don't you? Do, you do, you do. And I think what ends up happening, and we've noticed that a little bit with our HouseSmart program, where we look at the costs of these upgrades, uh, with more people using the, the 90 percent and, and above f efficient models, the price of those seem to come down to match pretty close where the 80 percents were. So, mm -hmm. um, and that's a good thing. So we, we get our savings for less. We always talk about too in winter time, um, the, the various heating systems that are used: gas, electric, and so forth. Whole house versus space heaters, that type thing. Talk a little about that, Brian. Yeah, you know, and, and that's something I really do want to address. Uh, that we're going into heating season, and we'll start seeing a whole lot of commercials and 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 flyers for these uh, for electric space heaters. Mm -hmm. uh, be careful with those; those are very expensive to operate. And one space heater is not more efficient than another space heater as far as electricity goes. They're all the same. I mean, you might buy one for three hundred dollars and. Yes, it looks better, and it's, it, it's in a nice wood cabinet, and, and uh, it, it, it may uh, match your furniture or whatever else, but it doesn't operate any more efficiently than the, the 15 or $20 one that you could buy you know, at the local discount store. So be careful, and with the electric rates where they are and the gas rates where they are, you're almost better off to be heating with, with your gas furnace. So space heaters don't necessarily pay out in the long run then. Absolutely. As opposed to the whole house system. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, here again with, with the rates where they are today, the only really way you could save with space heating would be to go out and actually disconnect, or not disconnect, but turn off your regular furnace mm -hmm. and then heat only the room that you're in at the time uh, and carry your heater around with you so you have a nice long extension cord or something and go from room to room and in that way you will save money but mm -hmm. the inconvenience is pretty high and you know, you have to be careful with frozen water lines and everything else that you might have in other parts of the house, so. Well, and of course, part of that uh, heating, cooling cycle that we talk about, both summer and winter, are ceiling fans. Useful in the winter time or not, Brian? Ceiling fans can, I mean, they, here again, they don't change the temperature of the air, whether they're in winter or summer, but, but it can take the warm air off the ceiling and, blow, and bring it down so you're a little bit more comfortable, especially if you have tall ceilings. Mm -hmm. Uh, talk about the outlook for fall and winter, if you would, Brian. Gas, electricity, prices, 
uh, that type thing. What does it look like as far as wh what you can see? And I know it's, it's kind of like looking into a hazy crystal ball, but what are you seeing for the fall and winter? Well, for the fall and winter, it, it, right now the gas prices seem to be hanging pretty steady. They, uh, they have went up a little bit in the last couple weeks. But overall, it's still much cheaper than it has been uh, in the years past. So, and the electric prices are, are um, you know, we're coming down off of our summer rates mm -hmm. into our winter rates, which is they're, they're good for our customers. But they're still up there a little bit. So we have to be careful about that and mindful about what we're using to heat our houses with and the cost of that. And as always, if people have questions about energy efficiency and such as that, they can always call Midwest Energy. Absolutely. Any other topic or area that we didn't cover, Brian, you wanted to mention? You, you know, as, as, as it gets colder and, and uh, heating season approaches, we also get uh, some of these, these people that are trying to sell you products out there, and we need to be careful. Um, you know, if you're in the Hayes area, you may be getting postcards or something inviting you to a luncheon or a dinner or something like that and save lots of money. Be careful with those things. Some of those uh, just aren't really above board and we need to look at that stuff real close. Same thing with some of the products that are offered. Sometimes these products tout a whole lot better value, if you will, and as you said earlier on the space heater situation, they really don't pay out in the long run. A absolutely, you know, and and here again, if there's money to be made out there, it seems like they, they, they kind of focus in on these, these, this time of year where we're trying to get into the heating season. I told Brian I was going to ask him just one last personal question here about the Cooper household and the fact that uh, we've got a water heater that's uh, so, uh, showing its age now mm -hmm. and we're thinking about replacement. Uh, we have a gas heater now. Um, gas or electric? Well, it really depends on a little bit on the household. If you're a household that has a large amount of standby loss, which meaning you're gone a lot, you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're both working, and the only time you're home was a few hours a day, and you don't use a lot of hot water, the electric ones can be pretty economical at that point. But if you're a large user of hot water, mm -hmm. uh, it, it would be advantageous to stay with some type of gas system. So, Brian Dryling. He is the energy consultant and specialist at Midwest Energy, and he's our guest on uh, today's Community Connection. Back in a moment, we'll meet the new Director of Corporate Communications on our Community Connection from Eagle Community Television. Every Sunday afternoon, NFL Red Zone takes you from game to game, live in HD. Every touchdown from every game. Go to NFL.com slash Red Zone TV. Get in the zone. NFL Red Zone. Every touchdown, every game, every Sunday afternoon. Get the NFL Red Zone for only $29.95 for this year's season. Call Eagle Communications at 877-61-EAGLE. Welcome back to Community Connection from Eagle Community Television. We're in the uh, corporate offices of Midwest Energy talking today with the new Director of Corporate Communication at Midwest Energy, Mike Morley. I wanted to find out a little bit more about Mike uh, as he assumes his new position this past summer. Also find out if he's settling in yet. Mike, welcome. Are you Thank settling you. in indeed? We're settling in quite well. Uh, we've got all three of the kids uh, enrolled in the Hayes schools here and uh, all of them are adjusting rather well to, uh, uh, to their new surroundings. Um, uh, the family loves it here. The, the job here at, at Midwest Energy is, is fantastic. It's a great bunch of people to, uh, uh, to work with and uh, Bob Helm had given me a fantastic uh, turnover uh, back in June, so uh, it's, it's, it's been great. We always have to embarrass these kids, Mike, by talking about their names and what schools they're enrolled in. Sure, sure. Uh, ben is 14. He's a freshman at Hayes High. Uh, he's playing his uh, first year of football. Uh, with the team and uh, he's enjoying that getting a little bit beat up but uh, but that's to be expected uh, we have a, a middle schooler drew who is 11 uh, I'm sorry who's uh, I'm sorry he is 11 and then we've got a little girl uh, Emmy uh, over to Laughlin and she's nine um, second career Mike uh, third career it is a second career I did uh, 23 years in the Navy uh, I'm from Topeka originally mm -hmm and uh, enlisted in the Navy in 1989, uh, went away for 23 years. Most of that time was spent overseas uh, or on ships uh, based out of the West Coast. Uh, and then we wanted to come back to Kansas and we figured that uh, the oldest kid going into high school seemed to be an ideal uh, uh, point to, uh, to, to 
break that tie. So we retired, came back to Kansas, and uh, ended up in Hayes. And seen a lot of the world through the Navy, I'm sure. Seen a lot of the world. We, um, uh, we were blessed with uh, being overseas uh, for, I believe, 17 of those 23 years. So uh, we've seen quite a bit uh, of Asia, Africa, Europe, uh, mm -hmm. and of course North America, and uh, it was a fantastic experience. Pretty good learning experience for the kids too, right? right. Wonderful. They, uh, they had the opportunity to visit so many countries and, uh, and really get immersed in, in a lot of different cultures, and that's uh, uh, an experience that most kids, I don't think, uh, get to have, especially at mm -hmm. that age. Uh, so I think they're going to be uh, uh, much better global mm -hmm. citizens uh, for that. Mike, I'm not sure if people realize the extent of Midwest energy throughout uh, the western part of Kansas. Uh, quite, a, quite a large surface area. Uh, I'll be honest, I didn't realize the extent of uh, Midwest's uh, service territory when I took the job. Uh, we cover all or part of 41 counties in central and western Kansas. Uh, we start uh, roughly at the, uh, uh, in Ellsworth County and roll east all the way to the Colorado border. Um, and cover basically all the counties except for the ones on the very southern fringe along the Oklahoma border. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a tremendously large territory. We've got about 11,300 miles of electrical line, uh, which uh, would go New York to Los Angeles, geez, four or five times. Wow. Uh, and then about 3,000 miles of uh, gas uh, pipeline and, and natural gas distribution system. So. Which the crews have to keep an eye on. Absolutely, absolutely. What's a uh, director of corporate communication, uh, kind of by its very name, sort of explains what you do, but talk a little about some of the duties and job description for us, if you would. Sure, sure. Um, the position is twofold. You've got an internal component where we're uh, communicating uh, new policies, news, information about what the company is doing to our 280 employees, which are spread out again over that very large service territory. Um, and then the second part is uh, the external communications, uh, what we communicate about what the company is doing for our customer owners. Uh, again, as a cooperative, everybody who takes Midwest uh, you know, electric or gas service is a part owner mm -hmm. of this cooperative. Um, and uh, a lot of the things we do, um, the business decisions that we make in, in, in running the, uh, the co-op uh, are of interest to them. So we try to communicate that to them uh, through various channels, through radio ads, to, uh, newspaper advertising, uh, through internal products like the current comments uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, that you receive with your bill every month. And uh, so, so it's maintaining uh, and updating all of those different channels uh, on a regular basis. You know, being, as you say, a co-op um, kind of translates into us being able to contribute to the success of that co-op, energy savings, uh, conservation, things like that all play into it, don't they? Absolutely, it does. Um, there, there's, there's different things to, uh, to consider with a co-op, uh, but, it, but it's like any business. There's uh, uh, not only how do you do in, in terms of sales and things like that, but how do you control costs? Uh, so anything that we do as a company and anything that our, uh, that our customers do in terms of uh, efficiencies and mm -hmm. things like that is good for the co-op. Mike, let me ask you the same question I asked Brian, and that's uh, if you can give us an outlook uh, uh, as consumers on the uh, coming fall and winter months on gas and electric prices, uh, uh, how are you, how's it looking so far? Mm -hmm. Well, if I could uh, pinpoint exactly where gas prices were going to be on a given day, I'd be living on a little island somewhere in the South Pacific. <laughs> but uh, overall, if, if, if you look at the trend, uh, it, it looks uh, very favorable. Uh, gas prices right now are about uh, uh, $3.50, uh, uh, under $4 mm -hmm. uh, per MMBTU, which is uh, uh, basically 10 therms. Uh, your build, of course, in therms on your mm -hmm. Midwest Energy bill. Um, and, and the prices for gas have been very, very favorable through the summer, and uh, a lot of the forecasters are saying that that will probably hold true through the winter. Uh, of course, how that translates onto your bill is subject to many variables, mm -hmm. like how, uh, how do you uh, keep your house? If you keep your uh, temperature in your home through the winter at 80 degrees, mm -hmm. obviously you're going to have a much higher bill, and then uh, the price of gas is uh, largely irrelevant. That's an important point you made, Mike, I'm glad you did, is the fact that we do have an input ourselves on what kind of energy usage we make and also uh, how many savings we can uh, accrue during the month by conservation efforts, by thermostat regulation, by th some of the things Brian was talking about on uh, energy efficiency and such. 
Absolutely, those are, there's so many variables when you uh, factor in the condition of your furnace, the condition of your home, uh, as you say, how you regulate your thermostat, uh, all those things play in and, and can make a huge difference on your energy bill. Now I think, Mike, a couple of other things here, and one of those is, uh, if you could, give us the real behind the scenes story of Bob Helm's retirement. Was that truly a retirement? Perhaps was he forced out? Uh, was it? <laughs> what was the real story and background here from a from a longtime ex friend, Bob Hell? <laughs> no, I, th I think uh, Bob's uh, Bob's timing was entirely of his own uh, uh, volition. But uh, uh, you know, I, I think Bob had been at Midwest uh, what about 27 years. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, he started back in 1985, and and. You know, you as a journalist, if you think of uh, how uh, how our craft has changed from mm -hmm. 1985, both on the print and the broadcast side, tremendous change. And uh, you know, Bob uh, rode through all of that, and and oftentimes as a as a one man shop, uh, everything he did, every change he made was self taught. So, uh, so uh, you know, he's he's definitely to be to be commended for. Uh, for having uh, endured all of that, as, as we all have. <laughs> but and he's not really going away, is he? Because no, he's, he's still not. doing uh, the voice for the commercials for Midwest Energy, the little phone thing that goes on. And such That's and correct. So uh, you haven't been able to totally get rid of him yet. No, you? no. And, and, and quite frankly, uh, <laughs> why would we? Uh, he's got a very established uh, radio voice uh, in our service area. And uh, there's something about a. Uh, a 60-year-old male that, that has a, a, a deep baritone voice, uh, which one can only get through genetics or smoking. Uh, maybe Bob had a little of both, but, uh, but either way, he's got a voice that I can't replicate. And uh, so, yeah, definitely we want to keep him there. Something else that Midwest Energy does, I think, that you're going to continue, uh, Mike, is the uh, educational presentations, groups, mm -hmm. organizations, schools, those type of things, right? Absolutely. We have a team that goes out and gives uh, a variety of different educational uh, presentations. Uh, for example, at the uh, Kansas State Fair, we had uh, several of our linemen uh, out giving electrical safety demonstrations mm -hmm. that, uh, that, that designed to teach young kids, you know, to stay away from uh, electrical lines uh, either when they're up or uh, on a bad day when they're down on the ground. Uh, and then we also uh, do natural gas uh, safety presentations uh, to teach uh, to teach folks what uh, what to look for mm -hmm. um, and what to smell. More importantly, for a gas leak, uh, natural gas uh, has a very distinct odor added to it of, of rotten eggs, and uh, and of course we want people to know that whenever they smell that smell, um, the best thing they can do is leave the area without using your phone, without turning lights on and off, without touching anything electronic. Just leave the area. Uh, get to a safe place and to call Midwest Energy so we can come out uh, and find the source of that leak. Mike Morley, who is the Director of Corporate Communication at Midwest Energy, our guest today on the Community Connection. Thanks to producer Jeff Durall and thanks to you for watching Community Connection from Eagle Community Television.